Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are deep diving into post requests and learning how to send and validate data in your API using Pydantic models. Alright, so this is how you build real world API. So let's jump into the code. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to create a new file here just to save the previous code. So I'm going to name it something like main2.py. Alright, so first of all, we're going to import the Pydantic model. So what does Pydantic model does is basically it is used for building models or classes for the input type of our requests so it can be easier to class to validate and verify the data for the endpoint so basically it is used to create classes for input type parameters inside the url all right so let's see how it works so first of all we can import the fast api from fast api and after that we can also import the pydantic base model so from pydantic we can import the base model all right perfect now we can define our app which is going to be fast api perfect now we can define a pydantic class so we now will create a simple data model for an item so i'm just going to name the class as item and then we can define some parameters for this so first of all i can define some name price and is offer which is a bool value and i'm going to set its default value to false so this is a basic class i'm going to use it as an input for my url endpoint so this is basically an item class and now we can define the post endpoint so we're defining the post endpoint we can use app.post and i'm going to post that to the items url so now i can select i can create my url endpoint function which is going to be something like define create item or something like you want and the input is going to be item itself so instead of passing each of these three as an parameter inside the query parameters we are just passing the model name which is the class name which is the item class all right so moving forward we can now for testing purposes we can simply return something like um first we can return a message which is going to be item created or something like that and then we can also return the item all right so now we can test this endpoint how do, how does it work and how does our validation work as well so i'm going to run this fast api using the uvcon command here and it should be running on the 8000 port here perfect so let's go to the 8000 port here and these are my previous urls so first of all if i go here this is not even a url endpoint so it, it will not show up so now I'm going to do what is I'm going to go to slash and I'm going to go to docs. So this is going to open the swagger UI for my fast API. This is a simplified UI to basically run backend operations for your fast API running on your local host. All right. So how we can run a post, how we can hit a post request using this is you can see we have got the, got a URL here, which is slash items. You can click on this and you can see it states all the details about this url how request body is configured with the name string for price zero which is the default value and is offer is false as default as well all right so now we can try this out so for trying this out we can click on try it out and i can pass a json body json object for an item so for the name i can just part it as a pass something like name one for the price i'll just pass something like 100 and for the is offer i'll just pass true for now all right so now if i execute this process i should be able to see the item printed inside my console so let's see if this works or not clicking on execute and we have the responses so we have got the response code of 200 which means the item was created successfully and we've also got the response body right here so the response body says the message which is item created which we had embedded earlier and we have also got the item which is the exact item object we had passed in during the execution process here. Also inside our console, we can see that post request was, was hit here successfully. If I would have printed the item here, that would have also printed the item inside my console. So I'll just print that here itself and I will execute it again. And now if I see it here, okay, that was a li little bit quicker. All right, so I can see 
the JSON object here, which is working perfectly fine. So that's how you can actually use Pydantic models to hit post request. So this basically eases the process of for fast API to compare and validate the item objects. So now one more thing we can do is we can will now pass a wrong parameter or a wrong JSON object of for item class. So I'm going to pass this this removing the is uh is offer variable from the json object and now i'll execute this and all right so as you can see i had not passed the is offer uh you uh the is offer variable in this and it does not it did not matter because is offer is already set to false by itself false by de default so that just picked up the value of false for it but now if i pass in a string inside here some something like price is cheap and then if i execute this this should give me an error possibly and yes yeah, so we can see the error code is 422 and it just says unprocessable entity and it says json invalid so that means the data validation has failed and that's basically how fast api helps you to validate and verify the data verify the request parameters quickly and also make the api much much faster than other frameworks and guys so that's how you can actually use post request and with pydantic models and so that's it for the video and thanks for watching